Alright, so since this is going on YouTube, what's going on guys? It's your boy Emery Reigns here, bringing you another Dead or Alive 6 related video. Uh, as you guys know, DOA 6 comes out next month, the 15th of February, so it's a little over a month away at this point. I know everybody's fucking hype. I'm excited. I'm excited to bring back First of Five Fridays. I'm excited to stream the game all the time. I'm excited to learn the game from top to bottom as I did DOA 5 and just, you know, continue to be knowledgeable of the game. Um... I'm bringing you this video because we got some new videos here um, that I, I'm suspecting Master is up to some shit and he's uploading these videos himself because he's playing the game at home, but that's just my perspective of it. Um, so we're going to be going over this stuff and kind of getting you guys' thoughts. Again, I'm doing this as a live stream as well as a YouTube video, so um, if you guys hear me say something that you might not understand because I'm talking to people, it's because I'm talking to the viewers in the stream as well. So if you guys want to join in on this live, you guys can check me out for the next time that I do this at twitch.tv slash emerarings. But again, DOA 6 is among us. It's exactly, um, I believe at this point, it's a month and... 12 days away one month and 12 days away so uh, make sure you guys get your pre-orders and stuff i'll make sure i put all the links to the um doa6 tech twitter and there and then masters twitter and all that other good shit um these videos are going to be coming directly from the dead or alive game official facebook page and they're also on the dead or alive 6 game uh twitter page as well i make sure i link all that stuff for you guys to be able to find it pretty easily in the description box but without further ado we are going to be talking about a little bit of this um and just kind of getting you guys input input on it as well. Uh, there is a couple clips that we're going to go through here, but I do want to give a shout out to some of the people that are on the stream right now. Um, nice streams, Project Bokuho as well, and uh, we got Black Loki. We got a couple, a bunch of people in here. What's going on, guys? All right, so here we go. I did not mean to open that up. Sorry, guys. Okay. So I, again, we are going to be. How do you sub on mobile? I'm not sure. I used to have a sub button. I'm not sure if that motherfucker still works anymore. Um, no, it doesn't work anymore. I don't know why um, it's not working. I'm going to have to figure out why that's not working. But um, you can sub on um, the PC if you'd like, man. That would uh, definitely be appreciated. But, yeah, we're going to break this down. Uh, the first clip that we got here that we're going to be going through is this one here. And we're all going to talk about it a little bit. Um, and, again, I'm doing this live on the website, so... Alright, so, that shit was sick as fuck, okay? Um, I'm not getting any sound from it, so I'm going to assume there is no sound for it. Yo, what's going on, Black Loki? So, I'm going to assume there's no sound for that just because I'm not hearing anything from it. But um, So, as you can see, we got... And you know what they're doing, too? A lot of people didn't peep this. These costumes are returning DOA 5 costumes. So, in that um, Hitomi costume with the blue... Uh, with the blue uh, jean jacket material or whatever with the boots. That's actually a DOA 5 costume. It was a DLC costume. And it looks like they're making a, one of her main costumes now. So that's pretty cool. Um, and Lisa got her lab coat on, which was another exclusive to DOA 5. Um, this stage that you guys are seeing is actually called Unforgettable. And pretty much Unforgettable is one that they showed where it has like four to five different stages all, all intertwined into one stage. You got the Great Opera stage from DOA 4. You got the Gambler's Paradise stage from DOA 4. You've got Danger Zone from DOA 1 as well as DOA 5 and the other iterations that it was in. And there is the, um, the DOA 2 Tengu stage. I think it's called the the Dark Miyama or some shit like that. I'm not sure what the name of that stage is. But that was actually Tengu stage, the ball stage in DOA 2. Um, and I believe there's one more stage if I'm not mistaken. But as you can see, they're trying to make the stage look like it's a replica. And as you can see, people are like, oh, the graphics of the stage just suck. And like you can see the details there. The stage is supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like a replica of the actual stage. That's why it's called Unforgettable because the stages are unforgettable. You know what the fuck I'm talking about? Fallen Miyama. That's what it is. Okay. Personally, I love that Hitomi costume. So let's go ahead and look at this gameplay here and we'll, we'll talk about it. Again, these clips are very short. So, um... I don't have the ability to slow them down, so we'll kind of just have to keep playing it back. But this is a mechanic from DOA 4, if you guys didn't know. In DOA 4, you can knock the other opponent over the uh, over the walls of the stage and do either a punch or a kick. Or you can come out of it and just go into a grab if you'd like to as a mix-up. Um, this was seen in DOA 5 as well, but the difference is in DOA 5, once this is triggered, you cannot do it again. So in DOA 5, once you knock somebody over that special um, wall there and you, you initiate that same cutscene from DOA 4... Um, you can't, 
um, trigger that again. So you're only going to be able to do that once in DOA 5. In this game, it looks like you'll be able to knock them over back and forth, back and forth. And the thing that they added in this one compared to DOA 4 was um, in DOA 4, when a person got knocked over, um, you kind of saw it happen and it wasn't very theatrical. It wasn't cinematic. As you can see here, they're making it fully cinematic and you got Hitomi jumping over it and the camera changes. So Hitomi jumps over it and as you can see, she goes right into her punch mix-up. So obviously she's going to have a kick mix-up. Not sure if they're going to have a grab mix-up or not, but as of right now, she does the punch mix-up. And again, if you guys don't know, quick launching in DOA 6 is going to be godlike because one stun, one launch gives you the max height every single time. So the stun threshold has changed a little bit. Um, and as well as once you get the one stun, you want to go for a mid-kick launch, a mid-punch launch, or a high launch, whatever one you want to do as a mix-up, or a grab mix-up as well. Just be mindful because there is break holds in the game which can stop any level launcher. So for those of you guys that don't know what the break hold is, the break hold is going to be a mechanic that you need one bar meter to do. As you can see, they have two bars of meter there that completes their whole meter. You need one whole bar of meter to use a break hold, and a break hold will stop low attacks, and mid attacks, and high attacks. Whether you're in stun, whether you're in neutral, you know, regardless of what state you are, you'll be able to use it. The only time I don't believe you'll be able to use a break hold is when you're in like a back turn stun or a limbo stun. I don't think once your character is... Um, in a limbo stun or a back turn stun, you can use it from what I can see. But um, you're going to be able to use it while you're fatally stunned as well, which we'll get into a little more of that. Um, so we'll go ahead and watch this here. And she goes right from the punch uh, mix up from the wall there. She goes into 3-3-P, which is going to be her mid-punch launcher. And then she goes into this new uh, new thing that we're going to see in DOA 6. Now, this animation was in DOA 5, okay, but you couldn't do it out of a juggle. So in DOA 5, um, you had like Hayate's down forward punch punch, the little rise and punch into the uh, uh, punch where he crushes down on you. If you did that at the threshold, the person would actually do this animation and they would bounce. But now you can do it out of a combo. And as you can see, Hitomi triggered the break blow there, which we'll talk a little more about again after we see it later. But this is this is very interesting. I love the way that looks. That looks fucking awesome. I want to watch that a couple times. That looks so fucking awesome, man. So that string that you just saw Hitomi did, uh, th that she just did just now, she had that in DOA 5, but it didn't have the the uh, chop on the end of it. They added that there to kind of cause that bound inside of the juggle, and then she went for the break blow there. And it's actually crazy because Hitomi could have canceled the break blow right there by holding back, and she could have went to another launcher again. But just remember, once you are fatally stunned, okay, once you're in that animation, once you see the yellow pop up over there, Fatal Stun, once you have the Fatal Stun, she can use a break hold to get out of this. So let's just say Hitomi did cancel that and um, Lisa did use a, a break hold. If Hitomi canceled that, that follow-up would have been able to be break held. Now, you can't hold out of the Fatal Stun, I don't believe, but you can use a break hold. So that's pretty fucking sick, man. I, I just can't wait to play this fucking game, dude. That looks so fucking awesome. Mm -mm -mm. So again, um... I will put the links up in the description and everything like that for you guys to watch. We got another video here, and it's a very, very short one, but there's a couple things I want to talk about with this. Again, for those of you guys just tuning in, as you can see, they're showing off some of the returning costumes, and it's kind of whizzing right by people. Me, personally, as a Hayate player, I don't like that costume. I never have. I hate that fucking Hayate costume they introduced in DOA 5. I just think that it looks weird on him, but that's me. And as you can see, Kasumi's back in her uh, blue fucking costume that she's always been wearing. Yo, what is that crouching hit thing? What crouching hit thing? What do you mean? But again, um, they're showing off some of the costumes that are coming back from DOA 5. And it looks like they're going to be staples to the game now. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be their default costume. But it's going to be a staple. As in, it might be his second, his number two costume. Because it looks like every character got a new uh, main costume in the game. But... Um, so this is just showing Kasumi has a new option out of forward forward kick, which is I, I, I think it's good because Kasumi, her forward forward kick in DOA 5 wasn't really all that good. Phases was super good because she could teleport off of it. But once Kasumi does forward forward kick on block, she's pretty much fucked. And it looks like they're trying to make some of these options more viable. Now, they gave her a punch option out of it. Now, Kasumi can do 4 4 kick punch or 4 4 kick. And I think she still has the delayable kick that she can do where she comes out of the air. So... As you can see, that looks fucking sick. And she can go into her into her stance from there. So she has a stance where she will disappear. She can do a down forward kick kick out of it. She can do a grab out of it. I don't believe she can do the grab out of that. I don't even know if you can do that on block. I think it has to be on hit from the way it looks. 
but it is four four kick punch and it does cause a little bit of a bounce now you can do four four kick and stun so that's going to be a fucked up ass mix up so once Kasumi does stun you, she'll be able to do like, you know, 4-4 kick into the delay kick or, you know, finish the two kicks. Or she'll be able to do the punts to bounce you. So um, it looks like they're just trying to make some of these options more viable. I'm not sure why these these game, these these uh, videos don't have any sound. That's very upsetting. I don't like that. So yeah, that's that's what that's looking like. That's pretty sick. Again, the clips are not very long, but we are going to talk about them. We actually have a couple of things to go over, so... Um, we have this other clip here. Now, this one, I want to talk about this one a little bit because Master is on some bullshit. And I just want to let you guys know, don't believe Master when, when he says he doesn't have this game. Master is banned from tournaments, so he's playing this shit right now. Don't believe him. This motherfucker is using Hayabusa right now is Master, okay? No one else that's working for Team Ninja is doing this shit. So I know you're in the fucking stream, Master, and you're full of shit. I see you. I see you. I see you chilling in there. So... Master's full of shit. He's playing this shit at home right now. So, um, yeah, man. Hayabusa looks fucked up again. Hayabusa's always fucked up, okay? But Hayabusa's fucked up again. So, as you can see, we're in the bottom of the ship stage, and this is where it starts burning up and shit at the bottom. Um... Now, again, again, what I was telling you guys about before, they're bringing these costumes back. This is a godlike ass... Hayabusa costume. I love that Hayabusa costume. Um, it's one of my favorite ones next to the classic one from DOA 2. Um, and I believe this is Zachariah's costume as well. Shout out to Zachari. Um, but yeah, this is, this is, um, yeah, they added more lighting to the stage 100%. That's one thing I peeped. They're adding more lighting to the stage. And the first thing I want to take a look at when we watch that, bam. So as you can see, Every move that calls a sit-down stun in DOA 5, at least from for what I'm seeing from this point, every move that calls a sit-down stun in DOA 5 is now going to be a fatal stun. What that fatal stun means is that the only way out of the fatal stun is to use a break hold. You cannot normally counter out of this. So, the reason why this is fucked up is because even though, okay, and this is there's so many things going on right now, even though that calls a fatal stun, he's back-turned. This motherfucker Hayabusa just jumped over him. He's back turned. And from what I'm understanding, you cannot break hold out of situations that are guaranteed. Meaning, anytime you're in a limbo stun, anytime you're back turned, I don't think you can use a break hold. You have to be facing the opponent from what I'm understanding. I haven't seen it happen from back turn yet. So again, Hayabusa's back is plus K turned into a fatal stun. And he just did some bullshit. Alright? So, I wish I could watch this shit in slow-mo, but I'm watching it on Facebook. And this shit's not on YouTube, so I'd have to download it, which I'm not doing. So again, we got back was K into 9P. Now, this was kind of useless in DOA 5. Hayabusa has had the ability to do that since DOA 5, and it was kind of useless for him to be able to do that because you're literally losing frame advantage doing that role. Even on hitting DOA 5, you were losing frame advantage. So now, it, again, back to what I was saying, it looks like they're giving use to a lot of moves that were not really used before. So as you can see, he does back was K. It causes the fatal stun. You have to break hold out of it. He goes immediately into back turn punch. Okay. Let's see here. He goes immediately into back turn punch into 3-3-P into the Nimpo stance. Alright. He goes into the Nimpo stance into down P plus K, which is going to be the new spinning aerial flame attack that they gave Hayabusa that tracks that is 100% safe. Okay. It is a high, but it tracks and it's fucking safe. That's fucked up. Okay, because he has other options out of Nimpo that are fucked up, but he goes immediately out of that into a fucking like into a Azuna. Well, yeah, so he ends it with the Azuna drop, but I forget the name of this. It's whenever you have somebody under a rooftop in DOA 5 with Hayabusa, you get this animation after you finish the Azuna drop. So you can do the Azuna drop out of the Nimpo stance now under the rooftop. So yeah, that shit was fucking sick. I know Futon's hype about this shit. So he goes into 3-3-P, into stance, down people's K, and the input for that grab, you can see the inputs down there. You have to do a whole, what's what's that input? Because I can't tell because he fucking flips sides. Uh, da, 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 da. He did down people's, yeah, okay, so there's the down people's K for the flaming attack, and then he does um, quarter circle back. It looks like quarter circle back, 
But then again, he did flip sides, so I'm not sure if that had anything to do with it. But it looks like quarter circle back. I'm going to input it the way I do all the other Zuna drops because that's the way I do the air grab in DOA 5 if it comes out like that. That's what it looks like you might be able to do. But it looks like he did quarter circle back grab inside of stance. And then it causes that rooftop thing right there, and that's... Oh, no, man, dude, Hayabusa's gonna be fucked up, and people don't... And Master's probably in his room laughing right now, and it's just not funny. Because Hayabusa's always fucked up, and that's fucked up. So, that's gonna... That just goes to show you... Um, there's no other character in DOA that's gonna be able to do that. Hayabusa has a... <laughs> Hayabusa has a sit-down stun that causes a fatal stun that he gets a guaranteed move out of because they're back turn. So... That, the fucked up thing about that is Hayabusa can do that shit in stun. He can stun you one time, do back h k cause a fatal stun, jump over you, do punch, and then do 3-3-P. And that's just what we see so far. But then again, because the stun threshold has changed, I think if he does any more after the initial flip into the punch, I think if he does any more, he'll, uh, he'll knock him down because the stun threshold has changed. So that's fucked up. I don't know any other character that's going to be able to take advantage of the game like that. So we'll see. We got another video here. Um, another quick one. Okay. And this is going into another video that we saw. So, as you can see, Rig got this fresh-ass outfit on. That is a fresh-ass outfit. He's got this little green jacket-looking thing with a hoodie under it, combat pants, combat boots. That's a sick fucking costume. They, what you guys need to do, and I need Master, I need you to tell Team Ninja, you guys need to give Rig a fade. Rig needs a fade. All that little shit on the side of his head needs to be faded out right there. He needs to have a tight-ass fade with the hair on top. Kind of like what I got. Because he he needs that. He needs to have that shit. So get on that shit, Team Ninja. I know you're watching. Give him a fucking fade, please. He looks terrible. He looks like he like whose hair looks like that. But anyways, um and then we got Diego in another one of his homeless costumes. Um with the he looks homeless in all his costumes. He's got the jeans on. Just give Zach a fade. <laughs> so let's talk about this gameplay. Let's watch it. Alright. So right off the bat, I'm going to tell you guys right now, that move from Diego, I believe it's back punch, it's 100% fucking broken. It's fast, it tracks, and it has follow-ups. It's fucking ridiculous. It's fast as shit. And on hit, I, it looks like they changed it. Okay, so on hit, on normal, he doesn't get a crazy stun from it anymore. And I believe in the Evo build, on normal hit, it used to cause this fucked up ass stun. You know the stun I'm talking about where you can't mash out of it, you have to hold it, you fall on your face. And like you kind of do like a crumple, it used to cause that stun, and it was fucked up. And I'm happy they changed that shit. So a lot of people don't realize so many things that just happened just now. So, first of all, he does the wall squat, okay? He does the wall splat and Rig hits the wall and crumples onto his stomach. So, you guys remember the wall game was exactly the same way as it was in DOA 5 in previous builds, uh, previous to what we're seeing now. So, I want to talk about this for a second. I want to compare this to something else. So, as you can see, Rig is still standing. He's not falling to the ground. In DOA 5, if you get wall splatted, you can finish the combo depending on what you do. Now, if you do a juggle into the wall, you'll immediately fall. But if you do the wall splat, if you splat somebody, they'll start falling and you can continue to combo them. In DOA 4, okay, this is a, this is a clip of a DOA 4 here. So, as you can see... Jan Lee was falling to the ground. Now, in DOA 4, you can stagger escape off of the wall. And pretty much, look how fast Jan Lee hit the ground. Well, he was trying to hit the ground. Uh, Zachary hit his ass before he hit the ground. Lapita was trying to slow escape off of the wall. And if you did it fast enough, you would immediately fall to the ground. And usually, they wouldn't be able to get a follow-up. He didn't get off the wall quick enough. And as you can see, Zachary continued the stun game right there. So... That was your option in DOA 4. You either hold or you stagger escape off the wall and try to get them to avoid their follow-up. In this game, it looks like that's causing kind of like a fatal stun. I'm not sure if I can call it that because we don't know yet. We haven't seen enough of it. But it looks like you might be able to break hold after that. Now, we haven't seen a break hold. This is the second clip that they've put out where they've done that restand after the wall. I want to see them put out a clip of them using a break hold, but we haven't fucking seen one, so therefore we don't know if it's possible. We don't know if that's guaranteed. We don't know if all they did was change the animation from five, and they might be falling. They might fall to the ground afterwards. We don't know because the follow-ups have been so fast. But from my perspective, what I'm seeing, it looks like once they hit the ground, 
they can use a break hold to get out of it. And if you don't have any meter, the follow-ups are guaranteed. And as you can see, after Rig was restanding right there, okay, he hit the wall and then he restanded. Uh, Diego did a mid punch launcher and then did kick punch, which is crazy because that shit does not wall splat. Kick punch, I thought was gonna wall splat and it fucking doesn't. Jesus Christ. And then Diego has an air grab. I didn't see this air grab before, or I could be on crack, or I could be tripping, but I never saw Diego with an air grab, okay? So I didn't even know he had one. This might be exclusive near the wall. I don't know, but he has an air grab, and we didn't even... Look, that's another thing that's 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 going right by our fucking heads that we might not even see. We don't know if when he hits the wall again, he's going to go into another restand. We don't know if he's going to restand again. We don't know if he's just going to splat like DOA 5. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know how he's going to hit the wall. There's so many unanswered questions, and they're doing this shit because they want us to wait for the game to come out to find out. They're not going to tell us this shit, okay? We don't know what the what, what the fucking thing is yet, so we're going to find out. I can't wait to find out. He, ha he been had an air grab? I didn't even notice. I didn't, wasn't even paying attention to that shit. Okay, so again, we're going to see it again here, and... Brad Wong does a slow ass move after we wall splash. He goes into back punch punch, which is going to be the one where he faints and then he does the mid punch launcher. Um, as you can see, the wall splat, he does fall and hold the stomach, but it looks like he might be able to stand up after that. That's why I really want to fucking see what is actually going on with the with the mechanics of the game. Um, so here we go. And then Brad Wong goes into back back punch and then he goes into the wall splat. And as you can see, Master is putting out these, like he's just sitting at home just editing these clips, putting a little DOA 6 at the end, cutting shit off in the right places so we can't see anything. Okay, he's, he's fucking with us, man. Alright, so we got another little clip here, something new that we didn't see. Mila, my secondary in DOA 5, who I will no longer be playing in DOA 6 for various reasons because she sucks. Um... She has an advanced low kick hold. Does she have an advanced mid kick hold? We don't know. Advanced mid punch hold? We don't know. Advanced high punch hold? We don't know. But as of right now, we know that she has an advanced low kick hold. That did no fucking damage. Now, this might have just been because they're trying to show it off. But that shit did no fucking damage damage but it is but look how sick that sh that bitch rolled her up like a fucking fruit roll up holy shit Ooh -woo. and that animation is in doa5 um i think it's mila's grab when you're laying on the ground and she she grabs you and rolls you over it's a low grab um i just forget what position you have to be in but um she that animation is in doa5 just this whole beginning part is all new holy shit that looks fucking sick Man, look at the stage. Look at the floor. The floor is all shiny. Look at the fucking game. I can't wait to play this fucking game. Oh, man, dude. So, um, you know, this is crazy. Um, I'm excited. I'm very excited about the game. I think there's some more clips that we can watch here. Because I haven't made a video in a while, so we'll kind of talk about a lot of this shit. I haven't, I haven't made a video in a while, so we'll go through a lot of this stuff. Alright, so again. So, again, back to the... Back to the um the fatal stun here. Rig 7P, as you guys used to know, used to cause a sit-down stun. So now it's causing a fatal stun. The only thing that I'm weird about is how do we like how are some of these moves gonna look? Like Hayate's back kick from from uh whenever Hayate had a stun and he was back turned, then he did back kick, it caused a sit-down stun. How is that gonna look? Because that's just gonna look odd. I don't know how they're gonna do that. But um Rig 7P caused a fatal stun. And then he went immediately into up kick. And that shit, again, did no damage. What's some hype about? Because sit down stuns, dude, were too good in DOA 5. And because there's no stagger escape now, sit down stuns were way too good. Yeah, again, and Mila's charge 7 kick. How is that going to look with the new fatal stun system? We don't, I don't even know how that's going to look animation-wise, but... Yeah, there might be two animations, probably. And again, uh, Elliot did use um, a break hold to get out of it. So they wanted to show you what it looks like when you don't use it. And then Elliot was able to use a break hold out of it. Now, for those of you guys that don't understand why they did this, without stagger escaping, sit down stuns would be way too good. They had to give you a way to get out of sit down stuns that was not stagger escaping. Stagger escaping is completely gone now. So we got another clip. Let me see. There's a couple of them that I missed. Why is it showing me shit that's not related to okay let's go back to the page because they're doing some bullshit right now 
All right, here we go. Let's go back to the clips here. Let's see what we got. Uh, Mila expert holds, sit down stones, pre order available. All right, so we got a bass clip here. Okay, nice little short clip. Apparently, Bass had this grab in DOA 3.1. What are you What are you trying to send, Boku? I don't know what you're trying to send. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh yeah, we gotta get this one too. All right, so we'll go over this one real quick since Bokuho just sent it. This is the DOA two stage, okay? Tengu's DOA two stage. Um, I'm still not sure what the fuck they're trying to say with this. I think they're trying to say, what is the what is the description again? It says Ayani has gained the new powered up has gained new power up combos. If you do a slight delay after punch, 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 then push kick, kick. No, then push kick. The combo will change and do more damage. There are other combos such as forward, forward, kick, kick, delay, kick. That also power up using the same comp commands. And as you guys can see, they changed the animation of that. In DOA 5, when Ayani did the first kick out of that string, they would start doing a backflip. Now it, it changes the, the whole animation chain. So I think what they're trying to say is if you time this a certain way, you get more damage off of it. And it sucks because they didn't, what they should have done is they should have showed it how much damage it does when you delay it and how much damage it does uh, when you don't delay it. So I wish they would have showed that, but, you know, we got what we got with that. And then she's going to do 4-4 four, four, kick, kick. 4-4 four, four, kick, 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 which... Yeah, you can definitely see her power up. Look how long. Look how long she powers up right there. So, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, the combo did zero damage because um, they, I guess they didn't, they didn't know that that shit wasn't turned on. But um, here we got Zach. I mean, we got, what the fuck I say Zach? We got Bass. Apparently, Bass had this grab in DOA 3.1. I don't remember because I didn't play 3.1. But this is literally, look how quick this is. He tosses you right up, and he can do a combo. Now, you're kind of low, so it doesn't look like it's going to be broken because you're not going to get too much off of it. But from the looks of it, this grab might be 10 frames. I There's no way to really tell, but he is a grappler, so it might be even faster. It might be 7 frames. But he goes immediately into his big swing grab after that. So, you know, we're not going to talk too much about that because that's kind of self-explanatory, but we'll see what else we got on here. Now, this one is sick. All right, dude, I, look how great this game. This is the perfect clip to show you how good this game actually looks. Before we talk about it, let's just watch this. Look at the sparks after that fucking electric right there, dude. Holy shit. Dude, look at that. Look at the fucking elect. Oh, that looks so good, man. Fuck. This is the first Nico thing we've seen in a while since he's been released. So... That looks like some kind of charge up attack. I don't know what that is. It looks like she's charging it or delaying it. That causes, immediately, that causes a crumple stun. So, immediately, the only way you're getting out of this shit is if you hold or break hold. You're not mashing a button out of that stun. So, usually moves that, that and I don't know if that's a parry or not. That might be a parry or a sabaki or something. We don't know yet. But, usually moves that take long to charge up like that and it hits you in the stomach. It will cause that fucked up ass crumple stun. So immediately from that, Hino uh, not Hanoka, Nico does a mid kick launcher that looks just like um, um, what's that character's name? Now Tora. Now Tora has a knee that looks just like that, and I believe Mai has one that looks just like that as well. I think Mai's is H plus K. I don't know what Now Tora's is, but she goes immediately into that mid kick launcher, and then it causes the bound. And I love the way Danger Zone looks in this game. The blue in DOA 5, like around this area, was extremely bright and it was annoying. They kind of dulled down how bright the ground is on the blue tiles. So, it's going to cause a bound, okay, out of the juggle. And immediately after the juggle, after the bound, the bound is going to cause the, the ground explosion there on Danger Zone. So, that's something cool to take into account. So, whenever you have an air juggle and you're going into a bound, and this was the same way in DOA 5. In DOA 5, if you cause a bound and they landed on the blue, they would bounce. And that was pretty much guaranteed at that point. So let's go ahead and continue on and see what else we have here that I haven't went over. Um, Sidestep in DOA 6. We've already seen a bunch of that shit. Um, fatal Rush without Break Blow. Okay, so we can talk about Fatal Rush Stop with Break Blow. we already seen that. Um, now let's talk about this one a little bit. So... People were complaining about it, and I think I was one of the people complaining about it. I don't like the idea that once you commit to a Fatal Rush and you hit them with the last strike. So Fatal Rushes have four attacks. There's one, two, three, four strikes. And then before, after you hit the fourth strike, they would um 
they would force you to do a break blow if you had the meter. Now, what they did was, as you can see, the first strike hits, second strike, third strike, fourth strike. Before, once that fourth strike hit, you had to do a break blow. So, um, as you can see, once the last attack hit, so you do S, 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 and then once you do the last attack, you hit back before it, and it will cancel. So now you can just do the regular Fatal Rush. I don't really know who the fuck would ever do that because that's retarded to me. If you're going to do the Fatal Rush and you're hitting them with all that shit, you might as well commit to the break blow at that point because if they don't have the meter by that fourth attack, they're definitely not going to have it by the break blow. So you might as well finish the break blow. There's no point in not using that shit. The only way I can see that is if you didn't want to use your meter. But why the fuck are you using all four attacks out of the Fatal Rush if you're just going to cancel it? That shit does no damage. There's no point. But, you know, that's just me. This shit is godlike. So, I do want to talk about this a little bit because this is my man Hayate, alright? This is my main character. It's my man's right here, alright? Obviously, Hayate still has quarter circle forward kick, which is H plus K, uh, which is plus one, I'm sorry. From range, you can get plus two or three. H plus K. Elliot tried to sidestep. Now, again, if you guys don't know, the first attack of every fatal rush is going to be a high kick, or it's going to be a high attack. Um, it's going to track and it's going to be extremely unsafe. So they all track, they're all highs to start, but they're extremely unsafe on block. After you block the first attack of a Fatal Rush, it's completely unsafe and you can't continue. So the only time Fatal Rush is going to land is if you hit it on hit. You can do the follow-ups if you don't do it on hit. On block, if the first hit um, lands, you get fucked up. You're completely unsafe if the first hit lands on block. So quarter circle forward kick. He does the first attack of his Fatal Rush, which is going to be the S button. S is, you, I'm going to have my S button set as R1 or RB, whatever you guys want to call for your controller if you play on Xbox. I'm going to set mine as R1 because in DOA 5, it's going to be the same exact thing. In DOA 5, I sidestep with up and R1 or I'll do, um, and then you just hit the S button. You just hit the sidestep button by itself without using the input to be able to do your Fatal Rush. So it'll be very easy for the people that play on default controls. It's all the same. Except for the sidestep, I don't. I never sidestepped with up up. For those of you guys that sidestepped with up up, it's going to be kind of weird to get used to this because now you have to sidestep by using the S button, which is why I'm happy I've always used it. Oh, that's how it works. Yeah, um, the the sidestep is up in the S button or down in the S button. So if you used up up to sidestep or down down to sidestep in DOA five, it's going to suck for you because you got to learn it all over again. Okay, so plus one fatal rush, seven P, three three K. Into the new 3P bag, blah, 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 new combo. Now, right there, okay? Let me play that shit again, okay? Now, the reason why I like this is because it's high risk, high reward. The reason why I say high risk, high reward is because Hayate literally could have gotten blocked by doing that fatal rush attack and been completely unsafe. But because he landed it, he gets this whole long combo. So I think what I'm trying to show you guys is the first attack of every Fatal Rush is going to cause that spin. If a person sidesteps, it's going to do that. Now, I think it's only if they sidestep. On counter hit, that will be a little broken. It would be a little broken to be able to get that every time, especially because Fatal Rush, you need no meter. If you guys didn't know that, you need no meter to do Fatal Rush. That'd be broken if that shit worked on counter hit. Just doing one fatal rush attack and getting that every time. That's a little broken. I think it only works if you sidestep. And I think the description actually reads Sidestep sidesteps and sidestep can be stopped by track and strikes. However, you can trigger a special fatal stun when hitting your opponent for the first attack um, of a fatal rush while sidestepping. Yeah, so I just confirmed that. The only time you'll ever get this is is when you uh when they're sidestepping after you yeah, um, oh, this show. yeah, this is going to be sick, man. I can't wait. So after the side step, if you get hit by uh, the first attack of a Fatal Rush, it's going to cause that animation for every character, it looks like. That's what they're saying. Because generally speaking, they said, you know, uh, once you do that same thing that we just saw, it looks like it's going to work for every character. Um, and again, we'll watch one more time because Hayate could have went and fucked him up. Like, personally, me right here, if this was me, I would have went right in. Okay, Hayate has full meter, but Elliot has full meter too, so you got to be careful. Personally, I would have immediately went into break blow, canceled it, and then did a safe throw or something like that because Elliot has meter at that point. He can break out of whatever you do after the break blow lands. But then again, I think I would have, um, no, because then again, look, Elliot can use meter right there to get out of that sit down stun. Elliot could have literally used meter to get out of whatever I did, but if I would have personally took the risk, did my, my break blow right there, and just complete, just finished the break blow because I would have did hella damage after that, so... Um, 
Let's see what else we got. We got some other stuff here, too. Let me see. There's actually quite a bit of shit that we missed. Let me see. Uh, there's one more that I wanted to watch. Where the fuck is it? I just saw it. Uh, where the fuck is it? I think it was back here. Damn, where'd it go? I just saw the shit. Sidestep, no, Fatal Rush, into Custom Con. Okay, yeah. So, we'll watch this one. This one's good. So, remember I was telling you guys about... So, the possibilities for this game are going to be fucking through the roof. The possibilities are going to be almost endless. Okay? The, the creativity is crazy. Yeah, no, dude, the gameplay looks fucking amazing. The creativity in this game, for those of you people that love creativity and doing uh, special combos and shit, the creativity for this game is going to be extremely through the roof because Hitomi does Fatal Rush right here, right? Ah, oh, this isn't this isn't what I thought it was. Fuck. I will right, we'll watch that one again. So she does Fatal Rush. She cancels the Fatal Rush. Now, I was a little confused about this before, and I wasn't sure I was gonna work, so I thought it might have been a little too much. If any character, if any player ever cancels a Fatal Rush on the third strike, the second strike, the first strike, it causes a Fatal Stun. You cannot hold out of it, but you can use a break hold. So as long as Rick has meter right there during the Fatal Stun. Um, anytime the Fatal Rush is cancelled, you can use Break Hold to avoid that 3-3-P. So if Rig really wanted to, he could have used Break Hold to, to cancel that 3-3-P. The only thing is, that whole thing could have been Break Holdable. So, essentially, dude, what I'm trying to say is if you don't have meter in this game, you're going to get fucked up. Because all this shit is guaranteed. If you don't have meter, that's a Fatal Stun. You can't do shit. You can't hold normally. You have to use meter. So, you know, the, the fucking possibilities for this game is going to be fucking endless, man. She goes for the bound combo, and then she does forward kick, down kick, and takes the ground damage. Um, there's one more clip that I saw somewhere, and I can't find it. I'm not sure if it was on the Twitter page or what. I don't know why these videos are popping up, because that's not related to what the fuck we're watching. Um, let's go back to the DOA page again. Let's see if we can find it on here. Um, let me see. Sit down, stun, and break hold. Pre-order available. Fatal rush, stop the break hold. Special Fatal Stun, Sidestep, Pre-Order, Fatal Rush, da 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 da, da. Um, Damn, I can't. Three hard. Yeah, this is all old stuff. We already reviewed the rest of this, but... Um, you know, I feel like we got a lot accomplished just now. We talked about a lot. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this special stream. Um, I definitely had a blast streaming for you guys and talking about the game. Um, DOA 6 does drop on Steam, PC. I'm not sorry, fucking PC. Steam, Xbox One, and PS4. Um, the, what is it? February 15th of 2019. So make sure you guys get your pre-orders in there. Um, I think for me, I'm going to get the digital deluxe for PC, obviously, and I'm going to get the physical um, collector's edition or whatever that version is for the PS4 just because I want that steel box. Um, so I'm mainly going to be playing the game on PC this time around, guys, unless people want me to get on PS4 for sub matches or anything like that. Another thing that I am announcing again, First of Five Friday is coming back. It's going to be fucking hype because no one's going to know what the fuck they're doing. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be good preparation for Winter Brawl because, as you guys know, Winter Brawl 3D is going to be the first official major for DOA 6. So, First of Five Friday will happen the first week DOA is released. We're going to have giveaways. We're going to have commentators. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hype. You guys already fucking know First of Five Friday was hype for DOA 5 last round, even when the game was fucking dead. And I can't even imagine what it's going to be like for DOA 6. So, I'm excited for this journey. DOA 6 is going to be hype. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button on YouTube and leave a comment, a like, and all that other good shit. And I'll make sure you guys check out my other DOA 6 breakdowns as well. And um, I will catch you guys later. Um, you guys have a good day, all the people that are watching on YouTube. And I will catch you guys later, man. Peace.